Hey guys, we are back with some more New York Islanders franchise mode, and in this one, we're going to get right to the simulation. Vienno is a 77 overall. He is a fourth line forward according to this, but he might actually be a depth forward based off his overall. So we're going to keep an eye on him. And if he's not ready for the NHL, then we're going to send him down and we will replace him with Darius Haynes. And that's it. That's all that we really have to focus on at the moment. Because I have a feeling that this team is going to be on autopilot just like last year's team. But we'll go a couple weeks here just to see what the progress of Alexander Vienno is looking like. And a game against Vegas. We have a 3-2 shootout loss. Jacob Markstrom injured with a sprained thumb until November 4th. You don't like to see that, but, uh, you know, hopefully we don't get any other goaltender injuries. 3-2 overtime loss versus Carolina. Then you have a 4-2 win versus Vancouver. And versus Nashville, you have a 3-0 loss. So there's the first shutout of the season against your New York Islanders. But then you have a 2-1 win against Minnesota. And against Pittsburgh... Oliver Wallstrom has been injured with an injured neck until October 30th. So that's a big one. Uh, even if it's, if it's only for a week, still a big injury. So we're going to have to fill Haynes in there. And I'll get Strite up here since he's the most similar to Barzell. And then Tuominen up here with Mueller and Natchez. And then I guess... Sedin can be up here with Horvat and Hines and then Haynes with Commodore and Vino. Yeah, and then... Oh boy, yeah, that messes up our lines a lot. It's only for a couple of games though, so I'm not going to touch it too much. I'm just going to go with what we have here. <laughs> so we're going to have to deal with Haynes on the power play for a bit. Yeah, it's only for one or two games at most. So, I, I wouldn't imagine that'll hurt us too much. Especially especially since it's against Winnipeg, a Western Conference team. So, yeah. And then Montreal. Wallstrom should be back here. And yes, he is. So, hopefully that game against Montreal didn't simulate yet. Now, how's Viano done? Three goals. What's his role? Fourth liner still. Plus one. 16 shots. Pretty good at faceoffs. Four hits. Nah, I don't like his ratio there. And we will replace him with Oliver Wallstrom. Wallstrom, get up here. Strike there. Two on one and up here. Sedin, switch with Haynes. And uh, yeah, I believe that is it. Peterson's an 81 now, so that's good. That's definitely good. We'll check out the AHL, actually, to see any growth down here. Scarabelli's an 80. Scarabelli is an 80, so we'll definitely call him up. And Barry's a 79, so he's a good injury replacement player as well. I think what we're going to do here... Well, first of all, we're going to put Wallstrom back on the power play, where he belongs. And we'll put Haynes on the penalty kill instead of Vienno. And what we'll do now is we will send down Alexander Vienno to juniors as he is not quite ready yet for the NHL, but he is, I guarantee you, next year, if we were simulating next year, he would be ready for next year. We'll call up Barry and Scarabelli as injury replacement players. And Markstrom, of course, is injured, so we're not going to call him up right now. But Gibson is an 84 at the moment. Not a problem with that as long as he simulates well. We'll just do best lines for the AHL at this point because there's not really too much of a point in developing these prospects at this point. Yep, we're all good to go. And that is a 2-1 loss against Montreal. So starting out 4-3-1. Uh, well, not terrible. Not ideal either. So I guess we can... Uh, we'll, we'll check out the team stats at the very least, see where we're struggling to start up the season, see what could be improved. 
and there's a good chance that it something that could be improved <laughs> since we're not 8 no right now. So goals for per game, we are currently oh my. 1.88. Uh <laughs> wow. That is something there. Our goals against per game isn't too bad. 2.25. Our power play is absolutely atrocious. <laughs> 5.3 on 19 opportunities. One goal. Wow. Penalty kill. Also pretty bad. 63.2. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we got some line changes to make. Because there's clearly... The special teams are not working whatsoever. Okay, so we'll try this for the power play. I have split up Larson and Riley so that we have a good defenseman on both power plays. And I have replaced Shea Theodore with Harry Peterson as he had 20 points last regular season in 67 games. Maybe he could do something on the power play. And I have also switched Wallstrom and Ayersberg's sides so that they're both on their one-timers. Maybe they could get a few more goals for us that way. And four-man power play, I'll do pretty much the same thing here as... Uh, do I want to have Theodore on here? No, I'll get Doug Hines here as well. Instead of Theodore. There you go. And then, yeah, Mueller and Strike, that looks good. Now, penalty kill. This has <laughs> just been our... For some reason, our constant area of concern. Uh, I'm going to say I'll switch Horvat and Haynes. So that's Natchez and Haynes and then Commodore and Horvat. And then I'll have Theodore with Durrett and then Riley and Larson. And for some reason, the second line is not going right now. One assist for Bennett Strike in eight games. Natchez with three points, Mueller with two. So that <laughs> second line, for whatever reason, is not working out this year. It might be because of the absence of, of Ghost, but I don't know. I, I, felt like, <laughs> I felt like this line would be able to run itself, but apparently not so far. You know what? We'll reunite the original first line. Mueller, Barzell, Wallstrom, and then Erisberg can be with Strait and Natchez. And Heinz, Horvat, Tuomanen. I mean... They haven't done much either, <laughs> to be fair. But I don't really know what other changes I can make here offensively. Uh, yeah, we'll just roll with this for right now. We'll see what this does uh, in terms of the top six. And if the top six can get going, then there's a good chance that our team will be able to get going offensively. But that's a little concerning. So, I guess we will go one more month here in November, and we'll see what happens. And if I don't like what I see, then we might have to stop the simulation, because <laughs> this is year number 10, and I really do not feel like pulling a Wolfsburg here uh, in terms of <laughs> our, early ski our, our early season goal-scoring woes. And Markstrom is back for the AHL, so we will definitely get him in there. As you know, we'll just go best lines. That should, yep, that'll do it. And there you go. Get back to the NHL. 5-2 win against the Leafs. 4-3 shootout win against the Panthers. And against the Rangers, we have a shootout loss, 3-2. Washington and Tampa Bay back-to-back, 3-2 loss. 1-0 win, there you go. Nice game by Gibson and our defense. Boston will be an eight to three win. There you go, offense. That's what it that's what I like to see. Colorado are eleven two and two, and we beat them. There you go. Three two win for your New York Islanders over the Avalanche. That's a huge win. Six three win over the Caps. And a five two loss against the Penguins. So we're for the most part we're on a good track here. As long as we can keep a good pace. Uh, shootout loss against the Panthers. 6-5 to five is the final score of that. 
Uh, 3-1 win against the Blue Jackets and against Ottawa. We have a 5-1 win against the Rangers. They are terrible. 7-13 currently. We are 12-5-3, but they give us a loss 2-1. So, again, for the most part, we're looking good. But there does appear to be some inconsistencies with this team still. As we have just lost three in a row. One against the Rangers, then the Maple Leafs, and then the Canadians, 7-6 to six and 4-3 to three respectively. So let's see if there's something else we could do here to uh, improve our standing as clearly <laughs> I think the 60-win season is already off at this point just given that we already have eight losses and it's not even January. So Wallstrom is doing good. He's doing well. Uh, Barzell is... Is he's doing fine. I mean, he has 19 assists and 20 points. Only one goal, but that's fine. He's not the goal scorer on that line. Wallstrom is. Mueller's getting it done now on the first line, as I would expect him to. Natchez with 15. Arisberg with 14. Strite with 14. So that second line, the top six is going finally, which is good. Tuelmanen, 14 points. Hines with 13. Riley with 11. Larson with 9. Horvat with 8. Sedin with seven, Commodore with six, Dumbo with four, Peterson with four, Haynes with three, Durat with three, Theodore with three, Scarabelli and Barry haven't played. Uh, no, don't want to switch teams. Goaltenders, let's see. Gibson, he hasn't done so well currently, but he is a veteran goaltender. Got to give him the chance to rebound and play like he knows he can. Now let's check out the team stats here. See how much better our power play has gotten, or possibly worse. I, I, I don't think it could get any worse than 5%. <laughs> uh, yeah, our goal scoring is up there now, 3.04. We're fine there. Uh, goals against per game, unfortunately, has gone down a little bit, or, well, up, technically, but, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> 2.65. So it's, it's worse than before. And power play, much better. 18.2. <laughs> And in terms of the penalty kill, a little better. 71.2. So, still an area of concern, but it's definitely better than we last checked. Do I want to keep going on a three-game losing streak? You know, I feel like that's just a bad patch right there. That stretch from New York to Montreal. Because for the most part, that month we were solid, you know. Uh, win here against Toronto, win... Shootout loss, loss, win, 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 loss. Shootout loss, win, win. And then three losses in a row there. But again, that might just be a bad patch. So I'm going to trust that this team can get it done. And I'm going to keep going another two weeks or so. And see if this is truly just a bad patch or if we are in trouble. So Carolina, Colorado. That is a 3-2 a, a loss against Carolina. And against Colorado, they're still good. We have a 5-1 win. Okay, so there's a confidence booster kind of game. Because they were 16-7-2. We beat them, so that should tell us that we are a good team still. And there you go. 9-2 victory against Toronto. San Jose, we have a 2-1 win. There you go. That's what I like to see against John Gibson's old team. Arizona, we have a 5-2 win. Vancouver, is going to be a 5-3 win. Yeah, that, I think that was a bad patch. Because we've clearly just made it up at this point. And hopefully we can keep going. So I'm going to go up to January 1st against Columbus. And we'll see what we have here in this stretch from LA to Buffalo. Shootout win against LA. 3-2. Winnipeg is going to be an overtime loss. Also 3-2. And Boston coming up will be a 6-2 loss. And New Jersey, 5-4 loss. Ooh. So we're definitely... What I'm noticing is that we are... Yeah, we're definitely a streaky team <laughs> as we come up with four losses in a row after having, what, was that six wins in a row? And now we're on a two-game winning streak from New Jersey to Buffalo. It's, it's a weird team. Definitely a weird team at the moment. As, yeah, you had that three-game losing streak there. Uh, Four-game losing streak, actually. And then a six-game winning streak, I believe it is, here from 
Colorado to LA, and then you have a what was that? That was a four game losing streak from Winnipeg to Tampa. So, <laughs> I mean, at least we're winning more than we're losing currently, but you know, I don't like to see all these streaks as that is not good news for the playoffs. As if you lose four in a row there, that you're done, or if you lose four in total in one round, then you're done. So, um, yeah, that's not putting us in a good spot, to say the least. I mean, we're still in a good spot in the standings, but when, once playoff time comes, uh, I'm not sure if this team would be able to get it done <laughs> in a seven-game series. So, I mean, at least we're scoring. Mueller, 33 points. Wallstrom with 31. Strite with 31. Barzell, 28. Still only one goal. Jeez. <laughs> He's just pure. He is a pure passer this season. Natchez with 27, Ersberg with 24, Tuomanen with 19, Hines with 18, Riley with 18, Larson with 15, Sedin with 13, Horvat with 12, Commodore with 11, Peterson with 10, Durat with 7, Haynes with 7, Theodore with 6, Dumba with 5, Scarabelli and Barry haven't played. Plus minus, Larson and Dumba are currently the highest. Let's see, shots. I expect this to be, yep, Wallstrom with 146. Shooting percentage, it's not that bad. All of our all of our stars are getting it done in terms of their shooting percentage. Mueller's at 18.8, Strites at a 14.8, Wallstrom 14.4, Erisberg 12.9. So I can't complain there. Let's see who else would be affecting our simulation. Maybe face-offs? Commodore's done just fine. He's fantastic on faceoffs, 58%. Natchez, almost 58% as well. Barzell, 56.2. I don't think faceoffs is a problem. I mean, yeah, no. There's no way faceoffs is a problem for this team. The lowest out of any of our main faceoff takers is Bo Horvat with 51.2. And then it immediately goes up to Barzell, who's a 56.2. And then Natchez, yeah, no. We're, we're fine on faceoffs. No reason to worry there. Uh, hits, Mueller 58, we have a lot of hitters, so it's it's not like anyone's really lacking physicality other than Sedin, Tuomanen, and Peterson, who all have less hits than games played, uh, same thing for Wallstrom, Wallstrom hasn't been hitting as much as he used to in past seasons, but he's still almost there, like he's he's got 29 and 34, so, and everyone above him is at least a hit per game. So it's not like we're lacking physicality here. Let's see the ratios here. That might tell us something. Uh, 29 to 17 for Mueller. Uh, Stride is good. Natchez, not good. 25 to 42, that's brutal. Uh, Tuomanen, 24 to 13. Hines with a 23 to 27 could be better. Jacob Larson, 21 to 34. Good for a defenseman. Erisberg, 21 to 18. That's good. Wallstrom, 20 to 27. Could be a lot better. Barzell, 20 to 16. That's good. Horvat, he's good. Commodore's good. Haynes could be a lot better. Dumba, that's good for him. Riley, that's about what I expect. Dura, same thing. He's having a little bit of an off year in terms of turnovers compared to what he used to be because he used to have, to have a decent ratio right now it's above a two to one ratio in, in favor of giveaways so might want to keep an eye on him harry peterson that's good for him sedine that's good theodore could be a lot better and let's see goaltenders so gibson has gotten his save percentage back up there to a 911 it was at a 905 before so he clearly has not been too much of an issue, if any. So, I would say the biggest problem here might be Theodore and Durat, just given their ratios of giveaways to takeaways. And then maybe you consider taking out... Who was it? Who was it? Was it Haynes? What a bad ratio. Yeah, Haynes had a pretty bad ratio, and then... Natchez as well, but I'm not going to take out Natchez. So what do we do here? I think I want to get 
what's his name? Uh, the guy, <laughs> the guy who we called up from the AHL just previously, Scarabelli, yeah. I want to see how he simulates in the NHL, so we'll give him a chance in, fa in favor of Darius Haynes. And in terms of defense, I mean, Peterson hasn't been bad. But at the same time, I do want, do kind of want to try out Barry to see how he would be. How's Dumba been? Yeah, Dumba's been good. Dumba has been good. Theodore's turnovers haven't exactly been ideal, but he is an 84 overall. He, I think he would help out the simulation more than Barry would. Especially since we're scoring more goals at this point. You know, we kind of do need that defense in there. The goaltenders, you'll find there. So, we'll just see what that does, getting Scarabelli in there. But, there's not much else that I think I could change. Maybe we'll get Durat down here on the second pair, and then we'll get... And I guess, maybe... Maybe Dumbo could do something on the top pair. Because I kind of want to keep Larson and Riley separated, unless we absolutely have to put them together. And if you do put Larson up here where Dumba is, then you put Theodore here. Yeah, I want to I wanna just see how this works for right now. Just given the amount of turnovers that Duret has had and see how Scarabelli works on the fourth line. Now, as for Natchez and his turnovers, uh, I'm just going to have to trust him. We're paying him 9.7. <laughs> we he, he should be earning that 9.7. He needs to be in the lineup every night. So let's go, I would say one more month, and if we're still not on a decent pace by the Arizona game, then I would say we need to maybe make a change or two. So Columbus, let's see what we have. We have the same record as them currently, and there you go, there's a win. That's what you like to see. Anaheim, there's another win, and Nashville... They're 19, 16, and 5. Let's hope we can make that 17. Yes, we can. 4-1 to one victory against them. 1-0 loss against Calgary. Offense did not show up at all in that game. But hopefully we can have a rebound game here against LA. Who are 21, 20, and 3. 5-1 win against them. There you go. And Detroit. 6-3 win. Okay, so we're, we're mostly on track at this point. Yeah, 4-1 win against Boston. That's what you like to see. Pittsburgh, they're not actually too good. There you go. 6-1 win. I think we're on track for a good end to the season here with Pablo Scarabelli in there. 4-3 loss against Dallas, but then you rebound against New Jersey. 3-2 win. New York, uh, Mike Commodore has been injured with a separated shoulder till February 18th. So we're going to have to, uh that's even though he's a fourth liner, that's still a big loss because he is uh, one of our main faceoff guys. So we're going to have to get Darius Haynes in there. Yeah, it's going to have to be Sedin here because he's the only other natural center. So hopefully he can start winning some faceoffs. Yeah, that's that's not good. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, oh wait, isn't... Yeah, he's on the penalty kill. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to put Horvat there. We'll continue the simulation here, but hopefully that doesn't affect us too much as Commodore was a key face-off winner for us. Uh, there you go. 3-0 win. And against Arizona, we have a 4-3 shootout loss. So, for the most part, we're solid, I would say. But that loss of Commodore definitely is going to hurt us until he returns. So, at least, at least we're first in the division. 29, 14, and 5, 63 points ahead of Carolina by 2. And I would say going to the break, we're in a good spot. I don't think we have too much of a reason to worry. As long as we keep up this, the pace that we've been going, we should be fine. So we'll go up to the trade deadline here. And presuming nothing major happens, I don't think we make any trades. But... I'm not going <laughs> to be one to guess as to what's happening because every time I do that, nothing good happens. So, let's see. Washington, that's going to be a 4-2 win. And Philadelphia, 4-2 win as well. And Ottawa, we have a trade. 
a third and a fourth for a fourth cap. No, no. A 5 2 win. There you go. And third and a fifth for Lowry. No, thank you. San Jose. If we can win this one, that'd be great. 3 1 win. There you go. And Markstrom injured once again. You don't like to see it. There you go. Went against New York. So we appear to be fine now. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Had to stop out there for a couple of hours, unfortunately. But we are back. And uh, my Commodore is also back from injury. So we have a fully healthy roster now. And the good news is that John Gibson is currently playing out of his mind. 923 save percentage currently, which means he is much he's been much better than the 923 save percentage as of recent. As the last time we checked, that was a 911. So he has been on fire for your New York Islanders as of late. So we really cannot let that effort go to waste. And we're in a good position. We're in first in our division. So as long as we keep up what we're doing, we should be okay. So let's go up to the trade deadline. A few games to go until then. So St. Louis is 28, 26, and 3. And we have another trade coming up. We're going to decline that. Do we have so we, we have so many trades popping up here? Uh, yeah, I'm going to decline it. Edit trade block here. Uh, okay, I'm going to need to <laughs> get rid of these two. Because we have trades coming in left and right at the moment. All right, that's much better. Now let's continue the simulation up to the deadline. 6-2 win over Detroit. We had a 4-2 win there over St. Louis. And things are looking good. Washington, we have a 7-2 win. There you go. So our offense appears to be rolling. Goaltending is obviously rolling with Gibson playing phenomenal. Oh, yeah, we're... we're I don't think we make any trades at this point. This roster is set to go. Yeah, we're set. <laughs> we're set at this point. If we do make any trades, it's going to be for depth for the playoffs. Because this is, uh, yeah, we're, we're fine. <laughs> there is no reason to worry at this point. We have 92 points. I'm pretty sure as long as we win maybe a, a few more games, we should be a lock for the playoffs. Now, what I would like to do is go through the trade block once more to see if there's any skaters who we can get as depth. Now, we do have to take into consideration our salary cap. We only have $2 million available, so not too much breathing room. So, it's not going to be any superstars, you know. And no veterans really on a <laughs> too big of a contract. So we're going to see if there's any inexpensive veterans here, which I'm not counting on too much, to be honest. But uh, actually, here we go. Martin Furk, I believe his name is. Yeah, 81 overall. 1.125. Two years left on his deal, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, I can definitely do that. As long as I retain some of that salary. Yeah, we can do that. For sure. And for FERC, I will give you, let's see, it's going to have to be a rookie skater or a pick because I don't want to break any other of our roster up. So I'll give you, I don't know, Klein. That honestly should be enough on its own. I might actually be able to get more back like a pick or even another veteran if they have any. I mean, yeah, they have plenty of veterans here. You got Merrill, Buchnevich, Ellie. Who Ellie might actually not be too bad as more forward depth. Make it 1.6. There's God that. Is he good at faceoffs? Yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'll get God that on this deal as well. And do the same thing here with the 50% retained. And we might, honestly, that might go through. Proposed trade, rejected. So they, they don't want to retain that much salary. So we're going to have to give them another rookie skater or a draft pick. So I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. We will give them, I guess, we'll give them a forward. We'll give them uh, Erickson here. 
So Klein and Erickson for Furk and God that as depth. There you go. And now if we could get some defensive depth, that'd be good as well. So let's just check how many fours we have at the moment. So we have, that's 10, I believe. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, we're good at forward. <laughs> and Vienna obviously can't play at the moment. We might be able to call him up for the playoffs, depending, because I know that once the junior season is over, you can call him up in the real NHL, but I, I don't know about this game. Actually, this is 16, including Gaudet. Yeah, we're fine for forward depth. Absolutely fine. Now, as far as defense goes, you have Riley, Durrett, Larson, Theodore, Dumba, Peterson, Barry. Chung is a 78. He could technically fill in there, but I would like to have a veteran uh, depth presence. So we're going to see if... Actually, no. We'll, we'll just see if Buffalo... Yeah, I mean, John Merrill might not be a bad idea either. Yeah, you know what? Well, sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, he's he's on the trade block. He's not making too much salary as long as we retain 50%. I mean, it's only for one year as well. So, it, Buffalo, I wouldn't imagine Buffalo would have too big of a problem with giving that up, especially for a prospect here. We'll give him Hanula. Uh, might be able to get a pick in there as well. But nothing too crazy. Maybe a Tampa third proposed trade. Yep, that'll work. Very nice. Okay, so I think that's all we're the moves we're gonna do. Cause we remember we have not only Gibson and Subban, but we have Markstrom in the AHL in case we need him. And in terms of defense, we have probably eight or nine defensemen who are capable of playing in the NHL. And, you know, you have, what, 15 or 16 forwards, so I think we're we're good. And, and there's nothing that we can really do in terms of getting another star player to really put us over the edge because we only have 1.7 in cap, and, I mean, we already have so many stars anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Just wanted to get some depth in case of injuries, and you can guarantee that injuries are going to happen, especially in the playoffs. So we're going to just, I would say... Yeah, we'll go past the trade deadline, and we'll finish off this season as we, you know, for this playoffs, uh, given that we're we're definitely making the playoffs, uh, I do want to do a lot more commentary third periods, just because, you know, it's kind of going to be the last, It's it is the last year, and I'd like to get some more gameplay in there, and yeah, we're, we're fine winning the way we are at the moment. Yeah, 2 nothing win against the Oilers, 4 nothing win against Pittsburgh, 6-4 win against Buffalo, and then a 3-1 uh, loss against New Jersey. Bo Horvat is injured with a mild concussion. That's why we trade for depth. So we're going to get Mike Commodore up to the third line. And do we have any skaters here? Uh, we have Furk and Haynes. We'll fill in Darius Haynes for right now, and we'll get Paris Sedin in the middle. And, yeah, that looks to be it. Was Horvat? Yeah, Horvat was on the penalty kill. So, Commodore, Haynes, Scarabelli, and HS. Yeah, that's fine for right now. He'll be back in a few days anyway. 4-2 win, 2 nothing win. There you go. And multiple players. So, I'm guessing that Horvat is back. Get Haynes out. And Horvat in. Now, who was the other player? Well, actually, Horvat is still considered day-to-day, -day, but we'll get him back in there. I don't think he'll be injured for too much longer. Who is the other player that is back? Because it said multiple players, right? Uh, for Canes, that should be it, right? Yeah, that's it. Uh, I don't know what... Might have been. They might have been talking about the Miners. Let's see a scratch here. Oh, yeah, Barry. Got that. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, do best lines for the AHL here. And we will get back to the simulation. And yeah, Boho is back, so it was good we got him in there. Edmonton, 5-4 loss, and then a 2-1 shootout win 
over the Vegas Golden Knights. Creeping up on 50 wins here. 3-2 loss against the Anaheim Ducks. Um, Hanzus, that is Bridgeport. Minnesota will be our 50th win of the season in a great fashion. 9 to nothing victory. Great offense, great defense, great goaltending. That game had it all for your New York Islanders. And as we continue our winning streak here, we'll go best lines for the AHL. Yeah, there you go. 5-4 win against the Calgary Flames. 7-1 win over the Detroit Red Wings. The veteran presence of this team is clearly showing at this point in the season as, yeah, we just continue to win games. I mean, there you go. This team is ready to go for the playoffs. I, I, I'm I feeling very confident. I mean, our only loss as of recent was that one nothing shootout loss over uh, to, uh, to Florida. So, yeah, I mean... And before that, it was Anaheim and then Edmonton, New Jersey. We've only had, I think that's, what, four losses since the trade deadline? Yeah, we're fine. And we almost had 60 wins as it is. So that's pretty impressive given where we were at the start of the season. So, yeah, 123 points. We clinched the President's Trophy. And let's check out the end of the season stats. And then we will end things off. So... Uh, Barzell, 87 points, 11 goals. <laughs> and then Wallstrom, another 50-goal season for Oliver Wallstrom to cap off the GM mode. What a guy. He's only 27, keep in mind. This guy is only 27. And in the past six seasons, he has had more than 300 goals. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wallstrom. And his, his rookie season, too, he had 32 goals and that 35. He's had over 360 goals for your New York Islanders. And he didn't even start playing in year one. <laughs> he, he, he broke into the NHL in 2019 and 2020 and didn't play a full season until the year after 2020, 2021. That was what? Year number three, year number four? Uh, yeah, that was year number three, I think. Yeah, that was year number three. But still... You know what? Phenomenal player. If he, Imagine if he was here year one. He would have, what, over 400 goals at this point? Jeez. <laughs> Oliver Wallstrom, man. What a guy. Erzberg as well. With 44 goals. So, I mean, you could attribute that to him being on the first line with <laughs> Barzell. But, man, we just seem to have a knack for developing phenomenal goal scorers here. Benestrite with a 35-goal season. So, he seems to fluctuate between 30... Anywhere between 35 and 51, that's fine with me. He's still a phenomenal player, regardless of how many goals he scores. Because he, he's guaranteed a minimum of at least 33 goals per season that he's been in the NHL. So, <laughs> I'm not complaining. And, yeah, he, he generates shots. He, he gets 15. He had 19 power play points. 15 of them were goals. So, really can't complain from Bennett Strike. He's physical. He's got a good ratio defensively. All around a good player. Uh, Andreas Mueller, he has been an underrated workhorse. He's he's overshadowed by guys like uh, by, like Barzell and, and Wallstrom and, and Streit occasionally as well. Uh, but Mueller has really been Mr. Everything, Mr. Workhorse, Mr. Consistency for this team. I mean, three consecutive seasons of almost 30 goals, uh, consecutive, uh, you know, 45 assists, 45 to 50 assist guy, consistent 75 point guy and he's responsible defensively he takes shots he gets a lot of power play points he can kill penalties if needed he's good on faceoffs when needed there as well he's physical he's he's got a phenomenal turnover rate and he blocks a few shots as well so he's he's really mr everything and morgan riley with a 53 point season doug hines with 52 tuomanen with 43 jacob larson with 41 Paris Sedin with 37 in his official rookie season, I believe it is. Yeah, he, well, actually, no. Last year was technically his rookie season, right? Because I, I believe a full season is 25 games at least in order to count as a full season. So, yeah, I mean, sophomore season, though, for Paris Sedin, very good season, 37 points, especially being on the fourth line the majority of the year. Bo Horvat with 34. Harry Peterson with 33. So following up a... Good season last year. Had another solid season this year. 
31 assists. Mike Commodore on the fourth line, 29 points. He's been a trooper for this entire GM mode. Scarabelli, not too shabby. Filling in there halfway through the season. Dumbutt with 15. Ferk with four. Well, he didn't play for us, so <laughs> that's that's really all from Buffalo there. And then Theodore with 12. Darius Haynes with 11 and 41. Durat with 11. John Merrill didn't play for us. And in terms of goaltenders, yeah, John Gibson was phenomenal all season. Well, I mean, not to start the season, but at, especially towards the end of the season, he really turned it on. Uh, the veteran uh, uh, the veteran experience of John Gibson and, and all of our, really all of our veteran guys, Morgan Riley, uh, Jacob Larson, uh, pretty much our entire defensive core are veterans at this point. And then even our a lot of our fours, Matt Burzell is already 30. Wallstrom's 27. All these guys can be considered veterans. Mueller at this point can be considered a veteran. Bennett Strite as well. Natchez. I mean, you got so many weapons on this team. Horvat's a nice veteran there on the third line. And it's it's looking good for your New York Islanders here. But that's what we thought was the case last year. And, you know, we got out in the first round against the inferior Detroit Red Wings as they barely made the playoffs. So, yeah, face-offs were good. Physicality, we know that's there. I mean, so many guys with over 100 hits here. Erzberg, Dumba, Hines, Horvat, Streit, Riley, Larson, Durat, Mueller, Natchez, all with over 100 hits. And then all these guys down here, Sedin, Scarabelli, uh, Tuomanen, Peterson, you know, you expect them not to be too physical. But then you got Haynes with 61, Commodore 72 down there on the fourth line, being a playmaker especially. You know, it's it's good to see Commodore getting in there physically. And he's at a hit per game as well. 72 hits in 72 games. So really can't complain from him. And then take away to giveaway ratio. Yeah, that's great, 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 great. Uh, Nate just got off to a very slow start to the season, but he, I, I think he finished strong. Hines could have been better. Wallstrom could have been better as well with the turnovers, but you know what, he... Once again, got a 50-goal season, so I can't really complain too much. Bo Horvat, good. Uh, Larson, good for a defenseman. Dura actually got his his turnover ratio to be respectable compared to where it was before. So I'm not complaining from him. That Putting him on that second pair definitely helped. And Tuomanen, he was good. Riley, he was good as usual. Dumba, that's actually pretty good for him. Commodore, he was even, so that's good. Peterson, a uh, good ratio for him. Haynes could have been a little bit better. Theodore could have been a bit better, but I believe that's gone. The ratio has gone down, which is good in this case for Shea Theodore. And Parasadine could have been a bit better. Merrill didn't play. Ferk didn't play. Scarabelli could have been a bit better, but it is his rookie season. Getting used to the pace of the NHL. Let's see the fights. So Peterson had three. Durant had three. Tuominen had two. And we already saw goaltenders. So, yeah, that that's basically about it for your year number 10 New York Islanders. All that we have left is the playoffs. And we'll check out our team stats here real quick. I mean, not that goal scoring was in any doubt. 3.67 goals for per game. This team is phenomenal. Goals against per game as well. Top of the division, 2.22. This team has it all. Yeah, this team definitely has it all. And after a rough start to the season on the power play with a 5% power play, we are now at 25%. That's great. And you know what? Penalty kill actually kind of turned it around as well. 78.8. We last checked it was at like 71%. So can't complain there too much. It's probably at least, I would have to say at least at 82% as of recent. So nothing to complain about here. Let's just, honestly, let's see who we have in the playoffs. And it should end up being... Florida or Toronto and it will be the Florida Panthers okay so in the playoffs let's uh, let's actually go to the playoff tree for this so in the west we have Dallas versus Winnipeg Colorado versus LA the Oilers versus Vegas and then Vancouver versus Anaheim and then in the east we have Carolina versus Columbus your New York Islanders versus the Florida Panthers Detroit versus Tampa and Ottawa versus Toronto. So there you go. There are the final results 
of the year 10 regular season. All that's left is playoffs. So let's make it a last good few episodes here. And let's let's make this a year to remember by not only having the President's Trophy, but getting the Stanley Cup. See you guys then.